I talk all the time about how engagement isn't the goal, progress is. But I have really shared with you how to help your people make progress and not just make it once, but continue making progress over and over and over again. Well, I do have a framework for this that I teach inside of my Cultivate training program, but I want to share it with you today because I know how important it is for you to understand how to get your people into momentum. So I'm enjoying some family time here in Nashville today, but I wanted to pop into my office real quick to record this episode for you because it's something that's been on my mind. It's been a recurring conversation. In fact, even my assistant, my lovely Donna, she runs my life. If you have ever interacted with me much, you have probably interacted with Donna. Donna has been telling me over and over again, I need to record an episode for you all on this particular framework. I haven't done it. So it came up in a client meeting yesterday and I thought, that's it. That's the episode that I'm going to record for you all. And here's the thing. When we talk about what keeps people around inside of our programs, what gets them sharing a great story, it all comes back to progress. You've probably heard me say it before. I have an entire episode on it, but progress is the goal, not engagement. People want to make progress and we need to help them be able to recognize that they're making progress. Now, it's challenging enough to get people to start taking action in a way that helps them make progress. And that is a big part of our roles as community creators, whether you're running a course or a membership or group coaching program, whatever that might be, we need to be thinking about how we're crafting our programs and our community experiences to help people take action that helps them make progress. But how do we not only help them get started, but actually keep that momentum going? Because that's the challenge, right? The challenge isn't just helping people get started because oftentimes people come into our programs and they're highly motivated. So getting them to take action initially is really not that challenging, right? What gets more challenging is the longer they've been in the program, helping them keep that momentum. And so I have a framework that I want to share with you that I call the progress wheel. This is something that I go more in depth on inside of my Cultivate training program. So if you're not in that training program, you want to check it out, just go to shannalyn.com slash cultivate. The link is in the description here. But I want to give you a high-level overview of this framework. It all starts with cause, which if you don't know my core community cultivated framework, it's cause, culture, communication, and connection. I talk about that all the time. But everything starts with having a clear purpose under that cause section. So if you don't have a clear purpose for your community or for your program, you got to start there, right? Go back to episode one. That's right. Episode one, that's how important it is. That's when I talk about the cause section of my core community cultivated framework. And I talk about the importance of purpose in that episode. So let's assume that you have a clear purpose and a clear path. So why are we here? And how do we get where we're trying to go? Those are the questions that people ask us. Why are we here? How do I get where I'm trying to go? What is my best next step? Okay, what is my best next step? Well, once we have those things identified, then we want to be communicating them frequently inside of our program. And that is where the progress wheel comes in. You know, I wish that having a very clear purpose and a defined path were enough to help people keep progressing inside of your program, but it's not. But it is where people start. So the progress wheel has five sections to it. And if you're listening to this on the podcast, you might want to jump over to YouTube because you're going to see a visual of the progress wheel. There's a link to our YouTube channel in the description, or you can go to channelin.com and you can click on the podcast tab and you can get the YouTube episode there. But that might help you because you'll have a visual. But the progress wheel looks like a wheel. There are five sections to that wheel. And the first one is purpose. Like I said, it all starts with having a clear purpose. People are motivated by purpose. And so we need to make it really clear what is that common cause, that common purpose that we are all working towards inside of this community. Once they have a clear purpose, the next question that comes to mind is what am I supposed to do next? How do I get to the goal? And that is where your path comes in. 
Now, for some of you, you're familiar with Stu McLaren's work. In fact, I interviewed him in one of the first, I think it was one of the first five, maybe six episodes of the podcast. So go back to the beginning for that. And he talks about his framework called the success path, where you define stages, milestones, and action steps. And that could be the path that we're talking about here, but it could also be just helping them get clear on their best next step. We just want to keep pointing them back to the path to success, which means they need to know their best next step. Not the entire journey, just the next step. So we get them clear on their purpose. We identify the best next step, and then they take action because they're motivated and they know what to do next. And you have equipped them inside of your program, right? That's the whole purpose of this. You've equipped them to take that step. So they take action and we can celebrate that action for sure. But what I want to make sure that you do is that you help them recognize their progress, which is the fourth step, and that you celebrate that progress. So we start with purpose, we go to path, they take action, which is the third step, and then the fourth step is progress. They make progress. The question for you is, how are you helping your members recognize the progress they are making? I'll ask it again. How are you helping your members recognize the progress they are making? And then how are you acknowledging and recognizing that progress and celebrating it with them, right? And that is the fifth step, spotlight. We want to shine a spotlight on that progress, okay? Then it just keeps cycling around. When we shine the spotlight on the progress, we want to point them to how that is helping them achieve the purpose, which then puts them back on the path, right? Action, progress, spotlight. Purpose, path, action, progress, spotlight. This is how we keep momentum going. And I wish it could be more simple. I wish I could tell you it's like three things in the progress wheel. But all of these are really important psychologically to helping motivate people. I won't go into depth in that, but you need to understand that this isn't something I just threw together, that this actually has a psychological and human behavior background to it. And every single one of these steps is really important. So we need to help people get clear on the purpose. They need to know the path, which helps them identify their next step. Then they take action. Once they take that action, they need to be able to see the progress that they've made. There has to be some indicator of progress. And then we shine a spotlight on that progress, which also acknowledges and points them back to the bigger purpose, right? Why does that progress matter? It's because of the bigger purpose. So whenever I share this, the biggest question I get asked is, well, how do I shine a spotlight on progress? So there's a few different ways that you can do this, but it all starts with having some type of measuring stick. Now, maybe you're using the success path and you have Um, milestones and action steps that they can actually measure their progress. But maybe there's a different measuring stick. Maybe you have some type of assessment. Maybe they're just able to check a box. And sometimes for some people, just checking a box, right? That feels like progress. But you want to make sure that you're just helping them be able to recognize on their own what is resulting from the action that they are taking. Because there's only so long that I'm going to continue to do work and to take action steps without feeling the good vibes and validation that I get from seeing the result, right? The progress, the tangible thing, the feel good thing that comes from taking that action. If there's only so long that I will keep doing things without feeling and recognizing some sort of extrinsic or intrinsic result, right? That's where that recognizing progress comes in. So you want to have that kind of measuring stick. And then that spotlighting, how do we spotlight it? You want to celebrate big and small. This could be helping them check a box, right? It could be rewards like badges inside of your program or certificates. It could be something as simple as words of affirmation, a celebration gift for them inside of your community. It could be an acknowledgement on a live training that you're doing or inside of a newsletter. You can celebrate their progress in a thousand different ways. And sometimes bigger progress, more progress, bigger wins get bigger celebrations. But that doesn't mean that those little um, 
attaboys and attagirls that we give people inside of our community are not valuable. They are valuable in helping keeping this progress wheel going. So I want you to be thinking about the progress wheel as you are thinking about how you're nurturing people inside of your community, how you're helping them recognize and celebrate the progress that they're making. Because when we do this well, we are able to keep our people in a state of momentum, which helps keep them from getting stalled. Because we're constantly validating the work that they are doing. And as much as we think we don't need it, we do. We need to feel all those feel goods. We need to know that other people see and recognize our progress. We want the gold star. We are trained from a young age to get the good grade, to get the gold star, to get into the treasure box. Clearly, I have young kids. But that doesn't go away. It doesn't go away. So how are you doing this inside of your program? I want you to be thinking about each of these steps. Do we have a clear purpose? If not, go back to episode one. Go back to episode one. Do we have a clear path and are we able to point them to their best next step? Episode one talks about this too, but go back to my interview with Stu McLaren where he breaks this down. Third, am I getting them to take action? And when I get them to take action, fourth, are they able to recognize their progress? Is there some type of measuring stick? Is there a way that they can see that they have done the work? And then how are we shining a spotlight on that? And how are we also, this is a fun question, how are we giving them permission to shine a spotlight on their own progress? A lot of people have been told in their life that we don't brag, right? That's arrogant, that's rude, that's prideful. But so many of us, we want our people shining a spotlight on their progress, but it's counter to everything that they've been taught. So how are we giving them permission to shine a spotlight on their progress by shining the spotlight on other people's progress, celebrating when people are talking about the progress that they're making, encouraging and asking people to shine a spotlight on their own progress by talking about it inside of our community, by featuring it in lives, by featuring it in the newsletter, by giving them badges and awards and gold stars and all of those things that we think we don't need, but we do. And then when we talk about and celebrate the progress of our people, how are we tying that back and connecting that back to the greater purpose of why they're in your community. Okay, this probably gives you a lot to think about, but I wanted to share it with you because I haven't ever shared it with you before. And it is a core part of what I teach inside of my Cultivate program. So I wanted to make sure that I could get this in your ears as well so that you could start thinking about this as you support people inside of your program. 